Sup? Yeah, that's my intro. Hey guys, welcome back. We're here. We're about to start another exciting segment. Um, you know me, I like to get straight down to it. We're going to be going over today the mail we received a few days ago dealing with the version update uh, 1.8. We're going to be going over the details of the update and explaining some of the things you may not understand and some of the things you may have missed. Uh, overall, it was, it was a very great update. Anytime you're adding to the game, you're, of course, going to increase the, the likelihood of, a, of attracting new players and maybe exciting some of the old players. So this is a, uh, we're going to go over this update. We're going to start with the formation system. This is where you can go. You can look here and it says formation. This simply explains, just to, gives you the ability to decide the, 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 the attacking army, um, how you want your army to actually attack. For instance, if you want to lead with your calves, followed by mages, and end up with infantry, um, you can do that through this system. You can go ahead and maybe lead with your mages, or maybe lead lead with your with, with your calves, but followed up by um, infantry and end with the mages. It will not allow you to change your siege, which I wouldn't advise anyone if you could to do that as sieges die from every single um, type of attack. This will allow you to be able to attack cities with, with, with your stronger troops first or with troops that are more that are more designed to attack the army that you're attacking. For instance, if the army you're attacking is heavily filled with calves, you may want to lead with your mages in that particular particular situation. So this will allow you to be able to decide how you want to lead and, and attacking and with your army. Dealing with the tech of the situation, they added a whole new tech area called strategic formation. Strategic formation um, is going to start off with some some production. A lot, a lot of you guys don't really want to hear this because production is very little used inside this game. A lot of people like to farm by attacking cities or directly farming. Um, two hours, you can have millions of, of resources depending on uh, your, your collection speed, depending on the area of collection. Um, and it doesn't take long. My most the most exciting part to this new tech for me is going to be the training speed three, which is going to increase the the amount of um, the decrease the amount of time it actually takes to train your troops. And the very first two you'll be able to unlock is going to be the cavalry front and the mage front, which in my opinion is which you really want to be able to unlock first, as you want to be able to set your calves. In the front, when you're doing attacking, I'm sure that's what many of us want to do. You want your calves to go ahead and wipe out the enemy infantry. So this is, this is going to be very exciting. As you can look at the, the amount of diamonds that it says that it's going to require to um, upgrade this. Um, 5,000 is not that many diamonds. It's, so that's it's going to be a few hours of, of training. And it's probably going to get done very fast by a lot of people because of this. It isn't really a whole lot that need to be explained. It's self-explanatory, um, but if you if you were wondering, this will definitely improve your gameplay. It will make it a little bit more technical as people will be able to defeat bigger armies just by the way that they form it, form, format their attacking armies. Um, hopefully, this will be a, applied to rallies. I haven't got information as to whether or not this would apply to uh, you can use your formation for rallies, but I would assume so. If the attacking general or attacking commander uh, has a formation set the way that he wants to, this would be very beneficial in using a rally and attacking head on with the troops you want to use to attack first. Um, the very next thing we're going to go over is as they mentioned in the mail, they mentioned that there will be a battle pass system. And issue the benefits for you to claim. Um, the battle pass system have not appeared in the game yet. It has not appeared. I haven't seen it in any shape, fashion, or form other than this update. So, like, just like the formation update when it first came and appeared, just at the bottom of the but you cannot uh, unlock it. Battle pass is somewhere in the game, and we're unable to get to it. If you're wondering what that is, and a lot of games, uh, they have a season. They may have a season or something that's called like a battle pass. And within that season, you can do have a certain amount of accomplishments that would allow you to get extra rewards. And I think it's going to be a very, very fun addition to this game. It's going to be a very fun addition to this game. It's going to be more geared towards just you more than likely. Maybe it may decide how much you have to, be, have to kill other, other enemy troops or how much you have to farm or whatever. It's like a single... Uh, it's like having new missions personalized for you. It could be something that applies to everyone, but everyone will not have 
access to it. Only those who are going to more than likely is going to be a pay to play like all other games. Like if you play the games like Fortnite, you pay for the season pass. It allows you to be able to get other rewards for completing other 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 missions inside of the game. It's probably going to be something that you have to pay for each season. Uh, I just want you guys to be aware of that because it could possibly be something that you're paying for each specific season. So let's stay on the lookout for that. Let's see where, where they go with this. Um, next on the agenda is adjusted balance T4 and T5. As they mentioned, T4 and T5 arms are strengthened, and the difficulty of monsters and barbarian fortresses is adjusting accordingly. This is the one thing on this, this update that I was not happy about. They did not explain it. And if you read it, it looks as if the T4 and T5 were both strengthened, but in reality, T5s were not really weren't really uh, uh, um, tampered with at all. I didn't see any changes to the T5s as far as looking at their stats. It could be something in tech that I that I did that I do not see. However, when we're looking at the T5s, I don't see any changes in their direct stats here. Um, as far as looking at the T4, the T3, and the T2, the T3 and T2, they did not mention. I have noticed a direct decrease in the amount of attack defense and health power as i mentioned in my previous video about the difference between them being a 20 percent increase that continued to be the case for t1 to t2 to t2 to t3 and t3 to t4 however every last one of those have decreased by 10 percent so we're, we're going to, except for T5, will continue to be a uh, 100% attack, 100% defense, 100% health, or if you want to say a level 10 um, attack, a level 10 defense, or a level 10 health power, it continue to be that. When we look at the T, we'll go back down to the T4, we'll look right at them, and we'll see that they are a now a level 7 when it comes to attack, defense, and health power. We will go, we will, we will take a look at how they were prior to, how they were prior to the update. Um, they still worth 36 power. However, there was an 8 here. As you can see, the bar filled as far as uh, uh, up to about an 8 on the meter scale, leading about 20% of the bar remaining. And when we look at it now, we see that that is not the case, that it is now uh, about 70% of that meter scale. Have, do you, did you guys notice this? I'm not sure if any of you guys noticed this, but I noticed it. It is a change in the game. Um, to me, I believe this is very unfair. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had a battle with a guy with T5. This is why my power is still at the way it was for my last video. Um, I had a battle with a guy with T5. We were rallying him over and over again. And them T5s were just too damaging at a level 10 or 100% damage. They were destroying us. We could not beat this guy. And then they did this update and they made T5 stronger simply by making the T4 and everything below it even weaker so it's going to be a, a bigger uphill battle if you do not have t5 uh once again kudos to the guys that do have t5 i know you guys have t5 spent some upwards in the world five thousand or more to get it in a very quick very quick manner so i guess you guys just deserve for your troops to be that strong for the amount of time that you bypass by spending i'm not against anyone spending there's no you know there's no one way to play this game there are free to play players and there are spin players and there are wells and if you're a well then you probably have t5 and you are just running through the game it's probably going to you know, not be much for anything in, in the world's competition if you're in the in the newer kingdoms such as 11, 10, 9, or even 8, maybe even going back down to uh, 7, possibly 6. It may not be a, a, a lot in the manners of competition if you're in those those kingdoms as there's not a lot of players that have T5. And with this new update, we see that the T4 are significantly less in power in comparison to the T5s. All right, so the next item that's on the list was dealing with, uh, they added a new hero, Medusa. She, they added her to the advanced summon. She was actually added last update. They put out a new mission for you to be able to get her. I regret to say that I was not able to unlock her. This was purely due to my fault. It, they gave us enough time. I did get a chance to get um, seven, seven charge on her. She's three away from being unlocked. And the one thing I want to say about Medusa is she is officially 
the apex hero of the game. She is officially the apex hero of this game. I will tell you why as we go into her, 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 her attributes, the things that she's able to do. The very first thing is she can, after being appointed as instructor, she can increase training speed by 32%. I don't think I need to explain that at all. Uh, the second, uh, second one is after being appointed as instructor, increase barrack training capacity by 8.52. So you can put more people into your barracks to train them. Um, infantry special training after being appointed as instructor increased infantry training speed by 24.06 percent why is this so important along with the last three which is of course cavalry training speed 24.06 percent and maze training speed 24.06 percent when you add that to the special training of 32.02 percent in general to training speed that's like, uh, that's over 50% for each troop and training speed. And not only this, but she doesn't have to be made the lord of your castle. She was, she's an assist, an assist hero. She's an assist hero. Her highest, her highest attribute is going to be in, in, in the realms of, of assist, which she's 9,363, which means you will literally, which means you will literally be putting her as an appointed hero as an appointed hero in your castle rather than leaving her as the lord as your castle this is one of the reasons why she is the apex hero for this game the only problem is going to be collecting shards for her and they fixed that problem they fixed that problem they put her in advanced summons immediately so you won't have to wait too long to hopefully pull some of her shards and get her up there and and into a good level and unlock her soon hopefully for myself and this is one of the reasons why she is the apex hero of this game so um so the, the the very final thing that they added to this game is they optimize the speed for entering the game once again who can complain about this this is excellent they they made it so that you enter the game quicker than before the loading time i don't know how they did it i don't know uh, I don't. I didn't hear anybody giving a direct complaint about it, but I am for myself exceedingly happy. Sometimes I'm on a train. I need to get loaded into the game very quickly, and the long wait time that it was taking for me to actually load into the game will, will be interrupted if the train goes to the next stop. I do want to cover one other area that was not inside of the update, but it's an area people have asked me about, and this is dealing with going from kingdom to kingdom. This is outside the topic of version one update, but extra information for you guys who wanted to hear about it, and this is going to be dealing with kingdom teleports. I just want to explain how they work, how to utilize them, um, just very brief and quickly. First of all, there's only one way to get and uh, a kingdom teleport it's here inside of your of your alliance and your and your alliance store under special for 730,000 alliance credits it will take you to buy just one and i say just one as you would think that buying one kingdom teleport would allow you to be able to get from one kingdom to another kingdom but it does not work that way it does not work that way. In order to transfer from one kingdom to another kingdom, you have to first select the kingdom that you would like to transport to. I will show you, for example, say, for instance, I wanted to go to Kingdom 11. If I wanted to go to Kingdom 11 and try to use my advanced kingdom teleportation to this kingdom, you're going to see that on the bottom it says 1 slash 50 to immigrate. This means I would need 50 advanced kingdom teleportations in order to get to this kingdom not to mention i will have to lose this amount of 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 of, of resources i will have to get rid of 13.8 million food 18.81 million lumber 10 million iron and 38.3 million of the of the of the of the gems in order to be able to transfer to the kingdom, I have to not have that. Some people chose to get attacked and let people take away their resources. Um, they feel like it's faster that way in order to get their resources down to teleport to another kingdom. And you will need a bunch of teleportations in order to, 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 do, to do that. Each kingdom, there's a different amount. If I wanted to go to kingdom one. If I wanted to go to kingdom one, it was simply, it would need 36 kingdom teleportations for me to get there from my kingdom 
from whatever kingdom you are in to go to another kingdom will, de will determine how much it will take for you to get there. Just because it's an older kingdom don't mean it's going to take less or it's going to take more. I don't really know what they use to determine how much it's going to take for it to get that kingdom, to get to that kingdom. It's possible it could decide, it could be decided based on what your level is as opposed to what's inside the kingdom you go to. I don't know what they are using, what, are, what they are using to decide, for instance, to get to this kingdom. This is kingdom four. It only takes six. It only takes six. This is a, a prime example of going to another kingdom and it taking even though it's a higher kingdom, it's taking less to get to an earlier kingdom. You would think it would take uh, more as you get closer to the to the to the, the new kings that they have. I believe we up to kingdom eleven. So once again, this is another exciting video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe.